Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is your grandpa. I'm glad to see you back. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We're going to get into uninterrupted power supplies. Why buying a used one may not be the best idea. And, be, and choosing how to find the best one for your particular situation. So let's get into it right now. Thanks for coming back. Okay, let's start with the basics. First, you have to understand what makes up an uninterrupted power supply. Well, I happen to have a cyber power here model number, and this one is rated at 450 volt amps. Now, that is one of the one of the things I really hate about these systems is that your power your power supply is 750 watts. This is seven 450 volt amps. And then the the rating on this and that and everything, they don't match up. And it gets very confusing to the consumers. Which one should I buy? But let's just go over the basics. Now, this is a very simple model number that you, most of the people have. Um, they come in 450, 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 amps, volt amps. Now, there's basically usually two sides to these. One is your surge protected side. And one is your battery and uh, search protected side. Basically, this is the side which you want to protect, the one that has your, your battery protection. This is the one you would plug your computer in, maybe one monitor, if, you, if that's what you're using it for. And this will be only for search protection. You should never, ever, ever plug a printer into one of these. They, they can cause a fire, they can burn this unit out, they're not designed to protect printers, these particular type of units, whether it be by CyberPower or any brand. Now, I asked, I did reach out to CyberPower, asked them to send us several models to be able to do this uh, video, but unfortunately, they never responded to me. But we'll go through the video now. I'm going to get into right now what makes this up. And I want you to just happen to notice something. At the bottom, I'm going to flip this over. And you'll notice that there's a screw here. And that will allow you, to, after a while, if you want to, to change the battery in it. Let's go into this in great detail. Now, as I said, there are many, many model numbers, very many uh, capacities, anywhere from 450 volt amps to 1500 volt amps, and even more to handle service. Some of these can handle your computer for 9, 10 hours to the power go out. But they're made up of basically two components. Now, let's get into that. Let me help Grandpa explain that to you. Now, anybody who has electronic components should have some type of surge protection built onto that line. You know, I always recommend that anybody have a whole house protection surge protector put into their home. But if you don't have one, you would have one like this for your TV set. And these are the basic components that you would find in any surge protector. Now, the better ones, of course, can handle a more of a greater spike. And a spike is basically a cha any time when some device shuts on and off. And that would happen in your own house. You know, you turn off the light switch or turn on the light switch. There's a surge of power either to dr being drawn, which would cause the power to drop, or the power to go up if you suddenly turned off a light switch. Well, now just imagine that a thousand times all throughout the power grid. Or if there's a lightning strike. Well, if a lightning strike occurred, there's a sudden surge of power, and you want don't want that power surge to get through into your computer or TV or whatever. And basically, it's breaking up into capacitors and chokes. A choke, what it does is basically it filters so that sudden that think of it this way: sudden surge of power, water comes through a, into an area, but there's a dam that prevents all that water from reaching the other side and only allow the certain amount to come through and a constant flow. That's what a choke would be considered. A capacitor, what it does is if the power suddenly goes from 120 volts, spikes up to 200 volts and comes back down, the capacitor is going to absorb that spike and gradually release it back out. That's basically this, the uh, how it works. And it can, the greater capacity of the choke and the greater capacity of the capacitor the greater filtering you're going to get. That's why if you go into the store and you go in and you see all these basic surge protectors, basic surge protector, 350 volt, 
a thousand volts guaranteed against lightning spikes that's the difference that's how the amount of components that makes this up and of course that's what you want to do if you're looking to protect your you know a thousand dollar sony tv you want a very good surge protector because you don't want that surge getting through now the other half of this is is you have a battery backup and usually these are lead acid batteries uh they're usually about um 12 most of them have 36 volt batteries in them and you can replace them on some models uh and i did do a video some time ago on how to replace on a particular model the battery if you can find it uh it is sometimes worth it sometimes not you depend on you but basically what they do if suddenly and you've all we've all experienced this and all of a sudden there's a, a sudden surge of power the lights go out in the house for a momentary second and then they come back up again huge surge of power what this which your surge protector ups is going to do is this is going to switch over to the battery and then for the period of time that the power is out, it's going to keep the power constant. It's going to prevent all those surges from getting through. And that's basically how it, it works. Now, the, the greater the capacity of the battery, the greater of time you can run. For instance, the one I was showing you, the 450 volt amps, will normally take a computer uh, with a 750 watt power supply and run it for up to three minutes without using losing power now the reason now I, I was telling you guys is that why should must be careful about buying one of these used power supplies or refurbished power supplies you don't know how old that battery is so one of the things of course if you're going to buy some a used one and there are a lot of them being sold see you know, being a, a, a IT technician for years one of the things what would happen is about every three years as clockwork, we would change out all the UPSs and or the UPS batteries. On our servers, we would replace the UPS batteries to make sure that the batteries would be, have a charge to be able to keep running. Now, the problem is if that battery is over three years old, its cap capacity, runtime capacity, is going to diminish to the point where it actually will not work. So if you're gonna buy a used one, one of the first things I would do is, you know, if the guy, let's say the guy is offering you one of these UPSs for five bucks. I would plug it in, make sure it was charged, and then I would plug something in it like a monitor and unplug it and see how long it runs. If it's running very well, it might be worth it because in the future you could buy the battery for $25 and replace it or not. The other thing you have to consider is how many times has this has a surge because those capacitors over time they do break down and the efficiency of the ups begins to break down now i hope this information has been helpful for you now the the bottom line is people ask me a million questions is okay so uh i got all that and uh well then what size uh how many volt amps should I get? I mean, because I have a big gaming computer, should I have a thousand? Well, let's just answer that real quick, real quick. So there's so many people ask so many questions. And I, you know, I wish that UPS manufacturers would all just put a chart in their information. You know, like how do you figure out what to do and which one to buy and which one to use? Here's what grandpa's going to tell you, and grandpa's recommended, and if I haven't already, but if I don't forget, you can buy us a cup of coffee or become a channel member by joining the channel. And don't forget to give us a like, share, and subscribe. Let's just go over what the volt amp means. Volt amps basically means is the power factor. is how much power will be available should the power go out and for how long. That's bottom line. Now, if you basically take a... 650 watt power supply on the average computer with one monitor a 450 watt volt amp surge protector will normally hold your computer anywhere from two to three minutes sometimes less depending on more how much you use now if you're but an 800 volt amp one which is recommended which i would recommend if you have a gaming computer with one computer 
and one monitor hooked into it can run you up to nine minutes. Not a lot of time. Now, a 1500 volt amp one can run you anywhere up to nine hours. It's amazingly you say, well, how is that so different? It's because of the size of the battery and how fast it'll drain. So here's what I would recommend to any person who's buying a UPS. First thing, if you have a gaming computer, I would buy an 800 volt amp unit. I would plug your computer and one monitor in. I would plug your other monitor into the surge protector. Your modem, your router, and for me, I also have my alarm system plugged into it. I, I, I get away with 450 volt amps. Why? If I'm in the middle of an upload, in those particular, at that low wattage, I can get away with completing most of the projects that I'm in, at that moment on without having to worry the power suddenly going out on me. In most cases, as you know, the power just surges. You have a momentary second loss. Now, at the very beginning of this, I said why you should not buy a used uh, on-throw power supply. Well, one is you don't know how long that battery has been charging and how much life it has in, in it. So, you know, when you look at buying a reconditioned or a uh, or used one, you have to be in consideration of that. Now, I don't say you shouldn't, but you should definitely test it. I would definitely, if you're buying a used one, uh, go there, have them have it charging for a while, and then, you know, take a monitor with you or something and plug it into the, uh, the backup battery side of the unit and unplug it. And then just see how long it goes before it fails. The same thing I would do with uh, my own interruptible power supplies. When I hit three years old on these power supplies, I will generally either change the battery or replace the unit. Uh, and like I say, a lot of these units, you can go in there yourself and buy a battery and the manufacturer will, will supply, will, will sell you a battery that you can plug in. And I get to do a video on how to do that on one particular model a couple of years ago. Uh, but you have to look at for your in particular unit. I guess some of them are very easy. You pop off a cover, it, it, you unplug it, you slide it off, take the battery pack off slide a plug in the battery pack slide it back in turn it back on again and you're good to go and some of them you have to take the back cover off like i showed you and you just pull and again make sure you unplug it if you're going to change the battery yourself and make sure you use uh, uh, insulated uh, tools because the charge that can build up on these pretty good they give you a nice whack could Remember, it only takes 0.7 volts at 1 amp to stop your heart. So you want to be careful. Anyway, it's, thanks for watching Grandpa's channel. This is your Casey, this is Casey Grandpa out. Check out my other videos on computer building and how-to and all of this. Again, you can buy us a cup of coffee, become a channel member. Grandpa loves to see you. Put it in the comments with this helpful for you. And until next time, you have a great day.